All right, perfect. Well, I guess we might as well get started now. It's roughly almost 10 past eight. Um, obviously, I'm Nicolina from Marvel Realty, and today we are going to be covering um, basically the legislation around smoke alarm compliance for investment properties and what the New South Wales Tenancy Act says about it. And also, we've got a guest speaker um, from Smoke Alarms Australia, um, Jem, who's actually going to be kind of running the show tonight. So he'll be um, giving you all the information that you need. He's awesome. He knows everything that you need to know about smoke alarms. So if you do have any queries or anything after the meeting, um, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to pass your details on to, you know, Jem if need be, um, but surely he'll be able to answer and assist in anything that you guys need. So Jem, I will give you the floor. <laughs> Thanks, Nicolina. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jem. I'm from Smoke Alarm Australia, one of the account managers that looks after um, the Fairfield, Campbelltown and um, Liverpool um, CBD areas. Uh, just want to sort of uh, get an understanding, obviously, with the new legislation, um, how much do you know about the legislation and what is required and, um, and what isn't and what rights the tenants do have. Now, um, I'm sure we would have been sort of a bit, a bit notified about the new, new legislation and when it's kicked in. Now, the legislation started on the 23rd of March. Um, and the Fair Trading has decided to give it you know, an extra six months um, until uh, due to COVID, right? Um, until the landlords are aware of the legislation and, um, and when they're going to adhere to the legislation. So that now ends on the 23rd of September. Now, what that means to you as a landlord is um, you need to ensure that you're, you're aware of the legislation how, um, and, and ensure that you adhere to it to avoid a penalty. Now, the penalty amount is $2,200 for landlords who fail to comply. Now, what the legislation involves is, um, previous to the legislation, um, it used to be where the landlords had to ensure um, there was a working smoke alarm inside the premises. But now the legislation says they need to ensure there's a working smoke alarm inside the premises and they have to get it tested every year. Now, you can test it yourself, of course, don't get me wrong. Um, but if you do test it yourself, you need to send a condition or some sort of a report, a report yearly, on a yearly basis uh, or every time you service the alarm to your real estate agent. Uh, and they need to get a copy of that as well. Now that has to be done without a doubt. Now with the tenants uh, rights, now it's now before it was the tenant's responsibility to change the batteries of an alarm. Now it's the landlord's responsibility to ensure the batteries are changed as well. Um, and that is, it's, this is what the new legislation is. And now if the tenant also notices that a smoke alarm is faulty and it doesn't get fixed within the two, yeah, two business days period. Um, tenants can actually arrange a external technician to service the smoke alarm. And by law, they have every right to get reimbursed by the landlord with, or within seven days. And failure to do that may result in a, a penalty of $2,200 to the landlord. So um, it is quite mandatory. Um, only the fact that because so many properties, especially you know, based on our statistics, over 56% of properties in New South Wales were found to be non-compliant. Now, non-compliant just doesn't mean you know, the alarm didn't work or it needed a new battery. This also takes into consideration where, um, you know, you know, Nicoletta, you, you might notice, you know, we would have moved some of the alarms from the old position to a new newer position because the building code of Australia had changed in 2019, where they had to be at least 300 millimetres away from the skirting. Now, we've been to so many properties um, and they've just tucked the smoke alarm to the corner. Now, Prior to that building code, um, it was proven that you know the smoke didn't get to that smoke detector in time, and that's why it had to be changed. And due to the fact there's been so many fatalities um, due to you know, non-working smoke alarms, where landlord has also been held accountable for it, um, that's why the legislation has changed. Now, when we go out through a property, and what we do as a company, we obviously go out and see how many alarms are installed, make sure it's in accordance with the building code of Australia and the New South Wales legislation. Um, we spray artif artificial smoke into the smoke detector to make sure that the chambers inside the smoke alarm picks up the smoke. And if that doesn't pick up the smoke, we will actually replace it, whether it's a battery operated or hardwired op operated alarm, without no cost. Um, we'll be in the same uh, yearly subscription, which is what we um, charge uh, once a year, and we don't charge extra for replacements. Um, and once that's done, we will put a brand new battery and mark, it as, mark, mark the property as compliant and send a condition report to your agency when then perhaps the agents can perhaps give that to you when you need to. And the moment we service the property is the moment we take on the liability from that, for that property. What that means is that if you've been to that property and we've serviced it, touch wood, if a tenant had passed away or got injured as a result of a fire where the smoke alarm didn't set off, 
we will actually be held accountable, which releases um, yourself as a landlord from any accountability in the event of a fire. Um, because there has been landlords in the past where they have been hurt in the past. And I, I do recall one landlord um, got a $40,000 fine uh, for not um, making sure there was a worker smoke alarm inside their property. Um, so we eliminate all that because we're servicing it and we're taking that liability for it. And it is tax deductible as well. Um, so you can also claim back from tax if you need be. So we do offer quite, a, um, quite an all-inclusive service um, where we only charge once and then we don't charge more than that. And we will include, and that includes unlimited attendance. So if your agency needs us to go to that property more than once, maybe because of due, due to a new tenancy or a faulty alarm during their inspections, we will go out there again and no extra cost. Perfect. No, that's really, really good information, Gem. And can you maybe just touch on, because I know we've got a few um, owners or a lot of people as well, especially that are covered under, you know, that are under a strata title. They kind of believe that, you know, they don't actually need to get their smoke alarms tested. However, it's not necessarily um, that, you know, their property is actually compliant. It's strata has a percentage of the building that they need to make sure is compliant and their unit may not necessarily be in that percentage that was actually checked. That is correct. So um, some strata companies do inspect units, some don't. And for the ones that do inspect units, they generally really go by the council requirement, which is uh, which only requires them to service 70 to 80% of the units on a yearly basis. That could be, they might service your unit once or twice in a year, or, sorry, two years in a, in a row, but the third year, uh, they may not service it. And if a fire happens in that third year, um, where, you know, the alarm didn't set off and because it was faulty or don't forget, look, sometimes bugs can also block a chamber from the alarm from setting off. So it doesn't have to necessarily be faulty. If there was a bug stuck in that um, smoke alarm, smoke alarms tested every year, um, that's for the legislation. If you do want to be exempt from that, you will need to um, get something in writing from your strata, if you, if you, if you, are, if you do have strata in your uh, apartments, you do need to get something in writing from the body corporation confirming that they will be servicing those smoke alarms every year and include replacement of faulty or expired alarms. You have to get that in writing and give a copy of that to your agency to be exempt from the New, the new South Wales legislation. If you can't get that in writing, the owners come back onto you as a landlord, where you need to make sure that there's a working smoke alarm in that property. Perfect. No, easy, easy done. No, because I guess, you know, that's one of the main questions that we um, tend to get from, you know, a lot of our clients um, in regards to, oh, you know, yes, but, you know, I've got a strata, you know, they check it all. Not necessarily. I think at the end of the day, as landlords, um, you know, obviously you've got, you know, you're liable for, you know, the health and safety of your tenants. Um, and even though you think that there are these, you know, other companies that may potentially be protecting you, you need to protect yourself first. So it's kind of like, you know, having a car, you're not really going to drive your car around if it's not insured. So, or without getting it serviced. So it's pretty much the same thing. That's exactly the example that I use. It's like getting an insurance, you know, do you really want to um, risk it? You know, like, fair enough, car insurance, or, you know, when we talk about the tenants responsibly, you know, like, the last thing you want is knowing the fact that you didn't do anything as per what the legislation states to make sure there's a smoke, work of smoke alarm on the property. And before you know it, like a little girl had passed away as a result of a fire. Mm. And it has happened. Like that fire that I was talking about in Landlord, $40,000 fine. A nine-year-old autistic girl died because it was her birthday that day and she had to, and she loved candles. And two o'clock in the morning, she went down to to play with candles and the whole fire, and the whole house caught on fire. Parents survived, the little girl did it. Because 98% of everybody was burned. So little, well, it's not really little, but you know, things like this, you know, do you really want to help hold that responsibility you know, of someone's death because you didn't get your smoke arm tested? And that's probably another reason why this legislation has changed because, and that's probably the main reason why they've now enforced the penalties to make sure that a landlord has to get it tested every year. It's the same with Strata. So if you can get that something in writing, perfect. If you can't, then you have to either test it yourself and give a conditional report to the agency or get a company that doesn't have to be us, don't get me wrong, you can get another company. As long as you get a compliance certificate, um, then that's fine.
And can you well. just confirm if say now, you know, we've got owners that want to take on that, you know, responsibility themselves. If anything mm -hmm. does go wrong, they will solely be liable. You know, would they be liable for what has obviously happened or? Yeah. So if you've, if you've obviously as the agency or ourselves offered the service and they said, no, I want to do it myself. Yeah. They'll be, that, that means they've automatically released you and us from any liability in the event of a fire. So, got uh, touch wood, God forbid, if a fire happens, because they said they're going to service it themselves. And because don't forget, when when a when a ins inspector comes, they don't only ins expect inspect the smoke alarm. They test where the smoke alarm was positioned. Was the position correctly? Was the position um, as close to the bedroom as possible? Um, they they take all those consideration. They ask the neighbours, "Did you hear a smoke alarm?" They'll say no, and they'll mark it as a non-work smoke alarm. So. They all look at to, uh, all these different um, venues of, like, for example, did smart, smoke alarm work? Was it in accordance with the building code of Australia? All that aspects. And then if that was, if, if they find one fault, right, yeah. it goes back onto the owner. Saying, so, well, you didn't do your job as an owner. You didn't make sure that it was tested properly. Or, um, so it's owner's back on you. So um, it is. So if they, if, if they said no to you and us, um, um, then they will be hot, hot, held solely liable in the event of a fire where the agency or Smoke Alarms Australia or any other company will not be held accountable. No, and that's, you know, completely understandable. Like, you know, at the end of the day, it is it might seem like such a minuscule thing, and but the way that I look at it as well, you know, it's a $99 fee each year. Um, but again, you know, it's just it's one less headache, one thing that you don't need to worry about. And unfortunately, Jem, you're going to have to take on that stress and not us and the landlords. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all good. And that's understandable. And like I said, it's $99 dollars tax deductible, which is even um, good. So even if you get 30% of it back, it's still, you know, a lot less than $99. And if you've got more than four properties, it actually, you get a discount at $75 per property. Same service. So if, if you have a landlord that has, has four more properties, uh, we will also give them a discount to pay at $75 per property as well. Perfect. Now, it is also, um, so we've got a question. Now, basically, I'm not too sure if you know the answer, but they want to know, um, does landlord insurance cover the landlord here in case of the instance where they're not covered, you know, with a smoke? Oh, you mean for the, for the house, the house, not the whole the landlord insurance for the house? Yes. So will landlord insurance cover them if, say, the owner did take on the responsibility um, and, you know, something god forbid happens um yep. will landlord insurance cover these things for them look every landlord insurance is different but we have heard in the past that some companies out there if uh, if a smoke alarm failed during the fire where the house got destroyed as a result of the fire yep. they don't pay out the claim and the reason why they don't pay out the claim is because in their mind is they think well if the smoke alarm went off the tenant would have woken up quicker and could have prevented the fire from spreading to the whole house Yep. Not all, not, not, not all landlord insurance is like that, but some are. So I'm not sure which company it is, but we have heard from some of those companies that they, they rejected the claim. And let's face it, every insurance claim, they want to try to not pay out as much as possible, right? Yeah. And, that, and that's how insurance is that. So it, it, it can happen. It, it, it can happen. Um, I, I can't confirm if it, if it has happened, but we've been told that it can happen, depending on the company. No, definitely. Um, well, look, did, just before we head off, did anybody else have any specific questions or anything that they maybe wanted to reach out in the chat with Gem for? Or, or is everyone all good? Yeah, if you've got any questions about it at all, um, about how the service is or what the legislation is, I'm, I'm happy to answer. Perfect. I think everybody seems to be pretty okay with it all today. Um, I think you've covered, you know, the bulk of it. You've covered what the legislation is now, what the changes um, are today. Obviously, you know, what you guys do to test it, um, the purpose of testing it. And also, you know, that you know, it is a big risk for the owners not to actually proceed with companies, um, you know, just again, landlords. Well, yeah, well, like, like I said, it's all up to the owner at the end of the day. Um, they can, like I said, choose a company, do it themselves and send you a yep. report every time they do it. Um, but on that report, you also need to include top, the type of alarm that you've installed, um, the expiry date of that smoke alarm and the battery that you've changed as well. Because your agency will need to use that information when yep. signing up a new lease. Because the new law also states that as well that you need that information before Perfect. you sign up a new lease. 
And I guess as well, like landlords, I know a lot of you recently um, have been talking about how much you love, you know, the owner portals that we do have at the moment. Now, Jen, prior to the meeting, obviously did mention that, you know, eventually they're, well, pretty soon, they're actually going to be integrating with Property Tree, which is the CRM system that we do use. So, you know, you guys will be able to access all of your smoke alarm compliance information, everything from there. And it's actually also going to make the turnaround and um, you know, the process a lot quicker in terms of changing tenants where they will always have updated data. So it means that they will never be delayed in terms of, um, you know, booking in your annual services, regardless of whether a new tenant has moved in or not. So it's good. Look, and, and, and a good thing about us servicing as well, um, you know, you know, sometimes you might, you might get a new management, right? And, and you need that, all that information about the smoke arm before signing the new lease because of the new laws. If once we service a property, you have that all that information anyway. So that way it's quicker for you yeah. to sign that new lease rather than having to make, make the tenant wait. And then say, hold on, I've got to get a smoke arms check before mm -hmm. I can put you in there because yeah. you need that information. So it does, all, so there's a lot of pros and, um, but again, you know, it's up to the owner if, if how they want to do it, of course. No, of course. I've also just had another question come through. So they're not too sure. So when it comes to um, obviously smoke alarms being either battery operated or hardwired. So do both of them, so do hardwired ones need to be checked every year as well? And do all smoke alarms now need to be hardwired or can they still be a battery operated? No, so hardwired or battery operated alarms need to be checked um, yearly, um, regardless of what type of alarm it is. Um, even if it's 10 year lithium battery ones, they need to be checked yearly because like I've said, um, bugs can even block a, block, a, block a chamber from getting setting it off. Yeah, in terms of um, the do every um, property has to have a hardwired? No. Um, the building code does state any um, dwellings, as in meaning uh, buildings built after 1997, has to ha at least have one hardwired alarm. Prior okay. to that, they can have a battery operated alarm. Okay, perfect. No, well, but once we go out there, we also check to make sure how many alarms are installed and whatnot, and we install it accordingly to make sure it's compliant and the alarm is, can be heard from. You know, every angle possible. Perfect. No, that's honestly, Jim, you've been an absolute help tonight. Um, I'm sure that, you know, the owners are going to appreciate a lot of this information. And again, like I said before, the Strata one was a big one. It's a constant conversation that we are having with our clients and, we, you know, I need to understand, you know, just make sure that as a landlord, obviously take all the right steps, make sure that you personally are covered. Um, and yeah, you just avoid all these headaches later on down the track, touch wood. That's right. That's right. The last thing you want is, you know, facing and going to court and, you know, dealing with all that nonsense when you don't really have to, right? Yeah, um, yeah look, look, you've got my number anyway, Nicolina. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm your account manager. I'm also, you know, um, your landlord's account manager. So if you, if they've got any questions about it, feel they can contact, contact my number at all, at okay. any time, of course. Um, or if you need to get in contact with me about it, by all means, give me a call uh, whenever you Perfect. Easy done. Thank you so much for your time tonight, Gem. Thank you so much nice. for your time tonight, landlords um, and Marvel team. Um, and yeah, we'll get this video sent through to all owners. So if you wanted to rewatch it or if you missed the beginning, um, we'll get this all email through to you guys. Awesome. All right. Well, have a great night, everyone. Thank you so much. See you later, Gem. Bye, guys. Bye, Nicolena.